few things are said to be as old as human history. As long as man has been civilized, poverty has existed. Whether you're talking about beggars along the streets of ancient Rome, or the impoverished serfs of the Middle Ages, every society throughout man's history has had to deal with some form of poverty. However, we are here today to talk about a very different kind of poverty. Poverty in America. The resolution we are debating over, as you can see, states, resolve that the United States federal government should substantially increase social services to all United States citizens in poverty. I and my partner, Jake, are here to tell you that throwing more money into a failing system will resolve nothing. In America, if you are poor, you qualify for a social service that takes care of almost every necessity throughout your life. This is what makes poverty in America so different from poverty in other countries. With the current system in place, every month people are given money to spend through welfare, food through food stamps, medical insurance from Medicaid or Medicare, and a place to live through free or subsidized housing. Things like individual income and family life of the recipient help determine the amount of aid and government support they receive. In Pennsylvania, someone could collect over $400 a month, 500 additional dollars in food stamps, full health insurance, and subsidized housing. A fully comprehensive and government-funded free ride. For some families, it is much needed and much appreciated aid. However, all too often, it becomes a safety net for those who choose to live the unemployed lifestyle. It is in this way that the help hurts. People get education to get jobs. They get those jobs to work hard to earn money to pay the bills. When children growing up in poverty learn that Uncle Sam can pay the bills and you'll never need a job, they never learn the importance of education. When a child feels his education to be unimportant, he or she could potentially drop out, or at the very least, not take their education seriously. It is through these choices that a person resigns him or herself to a life of poverty, and the current system perpetuates this vicious, this vicious cycle by removing consequence. Another way in which the system is counterproductive is that it does not help those who help themselves. In fact, it discourages you from helping yourself. Because welfare and other benefits are calculated on income, Having an income from working, even part-time, threatens one's benefits. Say you make a minimum wage with no, say you make minimum wage working part-time with no employment benefits. You'll be bringing home roughly 20 grand or less a year after taxes, but you'll lose all the government help. Needless to say, you'll find yourself living on $20,000 a year alone, which after rent, a couple meals a day at least, and one or two visits to the doctor a year, you'll be lucky if you can afford bus fare to get to work. The unemployed guy who receives full benefits can spend his days watching Jerry Springer and yet still make you look like a fool for trying to work. Another thing you must consider is where the money that pays for lazy unemployed guy to be lazy and well unemployed. It comes from taxes. Welfare programs and social services are among the largest recipients of taxes taxes that undoubtedly come from the pockets of productive members of our society. The affirmative's proposal would dramatically increase the annual budget deficit, thereby dramatically increasing federal debt. An increase in the already staggering amount of federal debt will lead to two things. It will lead to greater inflation, hurting the already weak dollar, and to combat the inflation, the federal government will increase taxes to service the debt. An increase in taxes would, at this point, only serve to further slow down the sluggish economy. Yes, poverty is a problem. However, it is a problem with complexities that go beyond paying for the rent for a while, while someone can find a job and get back on their feet. With the system as is, unemployment is looking more and more like a full-time career. Through the current structure and dispensation of welfare services, people are being discouraged from going out and making it on their own, choosing instead to live off the allowance given to them by the government. Throwing more money into this corrupt system would only attract more people to a life of poverty and the vicious cycle that keeps the unemployed unemployed. If that's not enough to get you to vote against a broken system, consider the fact that it is funded from your pockets. Vote against throwing your money away in a counterproductive system. Vote against giving out free rides. Vote for a comfortable life for those in need, yet a productive one. Vote negative.